Okay, so today we have a very, very, very special guest in the Social Marketing Hour, somebody that I've admired for a very, very long time. And some of you might know who this person is already for a number of reasons. I know particularly the first time that I met or found out about Marisol was when I was obsessed with this show called 24. <laughs> and she became a, a co-star in that show. And I'm not going to give any, for anybody that hasn't watched that show, uh, full of twists, a, 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 mo a, a very exciting time to watch that show right there. But that's when I became a fan of her. And then um, I just followed her career along the way. I want to I wanna read this uh, bio very quickly because it's so impressive that I want to make sure that everybody understands who this person is because she's not only an actress, she's not only a Hollywood star, she's not only a special person, she's a humanitarian that has... I don't think we can call this um, uh, very publicly comfortably have, because she doesn't really have them, but man, does she have brass balls like nobody else. And it's quite unique. So let me read this very quickly. Marisol Nichols, currently 2023, stars opposite Jenna Ortega in Paramount's winter, spring, summer, fall. She recently starred opposite Chris Rock and Sam Jackson as Captain Angie Garza in the Lionsgate film Spiral, and opposite Eugenio Derves in the Lionsgate comedy The Valet, which I just saw last week, which is hilarious. On the small screen, Nicholas uh, currently stars as Hermione Lodge on the CW's highly rated Riverdale, which has won a collective 19 Teen Choice Awards. Nicholas first, uh, Nichols first appeared in shows including Beverly Hills 90210, Friends, and ER. She made her movie, The Debut, Debu sorry, my accent is, is rough, uh, Debut, <laughs> How do you say it? Debut. Debut, all you right. In the film Vegas Vacation, playing Audrey Griswold opposite Chevy Chase. She's appeared in film screens, Scream 2, Can't Hardly Wait, Bowfinger, uh, Jane Austen's Mafia and Felon opposite Val Kilmer. Marisol also com uh, commanded the counter-terrorist unit in 24 opposite Kiefer Sutherland, appeared as a mysterious and elusive desert wolf on Teen Wolf, was special agent Zoe Keats in NCIS, and starred in Stephen Bacho's Blind Justice, as well as numerous other roles. So this next section of her intro uh, is uh, where she's really changing the world. And I was telling to Marisol before uh, we got started that a lot of people talk about changing the world, and then she's actually changing it with every single thing that she does. Balancing her work on screen with her humanitarian efforts, fighting for the rights of young girls and women, Mary Soul created her nonprofit, Foundation for a Fr Slavery Free World, embracing the global eradication of the most heinous human rights violation, human trafficking. She's deputized legal, legal informant has been dubbed the Hollywood Vigilant Lee. We're gonna talk about that quite a bit today. And she's taking part in numerous undercover operations leading to child predators, Sony Pictures, recently bought the rights to her live story and it's adapting it for a television series that Nichols is executive producing and she's going to be playing herself <laughs> that's very very exciting so um last but not least marisol was recognized by president barack obama with the president's distinguished volunteer service award for her work in human rights and for her service to our community Marisol, welcome to the Social Marketing Hour. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I mean, um, do I need this closer? No, no, that's good. It's okay. Yeah, that's okay, the good. sound is really good there. So, okay. for um, I know that you have been acting for a long time. Mm -hmm. People look at you and they probably say, "Well, she's twenty five years old," but because <laughs> you, you kind of yes. like have the fountain of youth or something, and you stay young. It's a Latino thing. It's a Latino it's thing, a Latino right? Thing. Uh, I took a selfie with you uh, mm -hmm. somewhere around. I think it's seven or eight years ago. Well, okay. I just showed it with yeah, yeah, yeah. to you right now, and you look exactly the same. <laughs> I don't. All right. I looked a lot younger back then. Right? It's just the beard. It's just the beard. <laughs> That's all. So, anyways, um, you got a lot of incredible stuff going on. I really wanted you to have an, uh, be in the show here because you inspire uh, a lot of us. You inspire me. Uh, you make me feel that I could be doing so much more for the world. And why don't you just give him an update about what's happening on on your front of things? Well, um, I suppose on the acting side of things, I'm about to leave in two weeks uh, to do the last couple episodes of Riverdale, our final two episodes of season seven. So it's coming to an end. Yep, we're done. This will wow. be the last time. Um, so that's kind of, it's been seven years on that show. So that's wow. been, it had a beautiful run, beautiful run. Um, and then I have my podcast going on where we sort of, I have different partners that I've gone undercover with on there. We show footage that we can show of cases that we've already closed of, of guys that have already been sentenced or we blur out their faces because we can't because it's still ongoing because these things take forever depending on the country that you're working working in 
Um, so we have that going on, and we just took down um, a pretty big trafficker, which we're really excited about. So we're going to start recording that episode and spilling the beans on that in about a month. Wow, that's mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah. So by the way, I've, River, though, is, is one of the most successful shows of all time for mm -hmm. teenagers and young, young adults, right? Well, also, I mean, believe it or not, the majority of our um, audience was in their 30s. Really? Yeah, because we started out with, with me, Skeet Ulrich, Luke, Luke Perry, and then Molly Ringwald came on. So it was all, even Machen from uh, Twin Peaks. So it was sort of speaking to the older generation as well. So it was sort of, sort of captured every. It just seems like it's a teen, teen right. show. But the majority was older, believe and, it or not. And you're working with a lot of teens yourself because you're the mom of, of a teenager, right? Like, so yeah. Hermione, I think is the name. Hermione. Hermione, right? Yes. Again, my accent. That's okay. Uh, so so it, was that uh, easy for you to do? Like, work with all these kids, young kids? Well, actors? the young kids were like in their 20s playing teenagers. Mm. So um, not really because I had the first season was a lot, a lot of scenes with just me and my daughter, Cami Mendez, and Luke Perry, who was my age, actually a little bit older. Um, so not really, because it was sort of balanced out between adults and kids and the kids were older. Right. Kind of thing. Um, right. so no, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't like I'm playing a mom on a teen show, which is what I definitely did not want to do. So it was really nice to have my own storyline and my own plots and stuff like that to do. Right. Yeah. Because we're, we're going to talk, we're going to get into the subject of human trafficking yep. and that subject is, is something that is very uh, powerful, very emotional. It's yeah. like. It's such a thing that we need to tackle. And we live in this world that um, it's so comfortable, right? Because we have everything yeah. and we have the technology and the cars and the, and we got the, the clothing and the food and everything and yeah. the survival. And we don't, we don't realize what's out there. It's almost like we live in this bubble and mm -hmm. this world is falling apart outside. So I want to talk about that uh, shortly, but mm -hmm. before I have an audience of people that are, um, looking to do better, looking to flourish, looking to expand, looking to set themselves on a path that maybe is going to get them closer to their dreams. And I heard mm -hmm. you talk about this recently mm -hmm. uh, because you were on a stage that, on a and a and you talked a little bit about your journey to success. And, and, um, to success. and it wasn't something that happened to you overnight. So you become a, a major powerhouse already, right? Like you, obviously this has been a journey for you for a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, for many, many years, yeah. did you just suddenly became a superstar or <laughs> can you tell, tell us a little bit about your journey? How many failures did you have along the way? How long did I it mean, take you? Way more failures than wins, but in my business, it just takes one, right? It takes one. Yes. One big break. One. Yeah. Or, I mean, I had a lot of big breaks. Like Vegas Vacation was the first movie I ever did. Which I was Chase playing one. Audrey Griswold, like the most famous kid in, in America. Um, and it was the fourth installment. So it had already been established. You've got the regular vacation, then you had European vacation, a Christmas vacation, and then us. How right? long ago was that Vegas vacation movie? 95. Wow. Yeah, I just moved to LA. And, I need to um, find out what medicine, what supplements you take. <laughs> Because it's crazy. No, it really I look is. so different. That was 27 so years different. ago. Yeah. That's true. Now, I, when I think yeah. about the movie, right? Like, it's because yeah. uh, obviously, like, if you haven't seen that movie, you should definitely watch it. It's a classic, right? Mm -hmm. But you were one of the kids yes. in the Griswold family. Yes. Right? Yes. Crazy, crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, you were talking about your journey with. Uh, so with basically, so it's a lot of ups and downs. It's just the way the business is. So, you know, I did Vegas Vacation. And I'm like, oh, great. Now I'm a star. And then. Movie comes out and it's still like, okay, good. So you have an audition. You have an audition. You have an audition. I'm like, I do? And it just, I sort of had to learn as I, as I went. And unfortunately, I guess, or fortunately in my business, you're only as good as your last job. Right. So it's a constant hustle, a constant hustle. And there's, you know, sometimes 40 no's to every one yes. Even Easily. despite success in the past. Even oh, having yeah. been a part of like All Vegas of us. vacation. Like that's, absolutely. There's one thing I've learned, even the... You know, even the Kate Winslet's of the world, even the the um, different actors that have that have, you know, climbed all the way to the top, or even like look at Brendan Fraser, right? He did a thousand movies, right? Everyone knew him from all these different movies, and then he didn't work for like ten years, hmm. fifteen years, and then all of a sudden he comes out with the whale, and now he's, and an he's the hottest thing in the world right, right now. But that. That took a lot of, like, no one took him seriously. He was given Tarzan and all these stupid little roles that really weren't fulfilling for him. And then one day he comes back and reinvents himself and he's got the whale and it's like, boom, and everything goes. And that's sort of, I would say, the motto to my business is you can never, you can never give up. 
because the one yes is always around the corner. I mean, the amount of people that I've heard of that were about to quit and then got something big, it's just the way it kind of works. So it, it honestly, it takes persistence, hard work and persistence. There's not really a, a secret to it. It's just keep working, keep going, keep yourself in as best shape as you possibly can and just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Which is the same in the game yeah. of business. Exactly. Right? Like you, you're going to fail along the way. And yeah. Most people quit and that's why you exactly. know, it's difficult to, to win in the game. Yeah. But the ones that actually win are the ones that persist. Yeah. So it's no different than your process and your career and your journey. It's yeah. always, it's always goes down to hard work. And, and honestly, as any business, like you look out into the marketplace and you're like, okay, well, what, what works? What doesn't work? What, what are they looking for? Or whatever, whatever it is. Same, same with the business, except for you're the product. Right. You know what I mean? So before you got into this big first like role of like being a Griswold, 1995, mm -hmm. was that a, a, a long journey for you to get there, to get that opportunity um, for the first time? To be honest, no, I was really lucky. I, I got a series out of Chicago. I fell into acting, I literally, and I got moved to LA, got a TV series and the TV series got canceled. <laughs> we did six episodes and I was like, oh, great. And then it got canceled and I was like, oh. And then I had to go out and audition again and then got Vegas vacation. I was like, oh, great. And then I had to go out and audition again. And that's the way it's always been. Up so they'll down. be, yeah, they'll be two years. I mean, I think I went through a period of almost three years where I didn't book anything. Wow. That was awful. Nothing. So 90 how, auditions how you, a year and nothing. How do you survive those three years, right? If you get used to it, like yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if you get used to a certain lifestyle, like, mm -hmm. and then no job for three years. Well, I think that's why you always hear people in my business, they go broke or whatever it is, because it's, it's feast or famine. So I might like during Riverdale, I might be like, oh my God, I'm making so much money, but I don't know how long that money has to last me. That money might have to last me and my daughter three years. Cause I don't know when the next job is coming. So that's sort of, I've learned that over the years of how to like, okay, I need to make the money last because I don't know how long I need it to last for. Correct. That kind of thing. Just like you know life is going to end, you know that show is going to end. Yeah, exactly. That's, at some point it's going to end. At some point. Which, by the way, seven years is an incredible accomplishment. Yeah, because yeah. Because shows don't really last no. that long. Mm -mm. It's similar to like an NFL career. Right. People don't realize that the average NFL career exactly. is under three years. Right. Because you see the Tom Brady's of the world that right. last 23, but you don't That's see the rare. other 99 point something percent that actually come in and out of exactly. the league, right? Exactly. So it's going to happen like that. So yeah. it's, uh, it's being sane about what the opportunity is at that moment and Have not, to. not be crazy about exactly. it, right? Have to. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. So how long is your acting career at this point? Almost over 20 years, 25 years. So basically at, at the Las Vegas vacation movie. Yeah, right since 1995. There. Wow. It was when I moved to LA. Amazing. September 5th, 1995. That could have been a, a I would imagine <laughs> it's a very special moment when you're like, oh, you made, you, you, you got the part. You're going to play with Chevy oh, Chase. Yeah. Cause Chevy Chase was a superstar Well, I never thought point. in a million years that they would hire me. I'm like, I'm a little half Mexican girl from Chicago. Audrey Griswold is like, you know, the, the all American family. This is never going to happen. Wow. And then I just kept having audition. I think I probably auditioned like seven times. I just didn't think I'd get it. You know, same with 24. I had auditioned four times for different roles on that show. And I was like, and then they called me again, like they want you to audition. I'm like, they never hire me. I don't want to go. But you still do. And it. my agent was like, no, you have to go. And I'm like, why do I have to go? They never hire me. They're like, just go. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll go. And then wow. I was the only one there. And they're like, no, no, we wanted to hire you. We were just trying to find wow. a role. And I was like, oh, so I've learned, you know, you learn things as you go. You're like, yeah. oh, okay, all right, okay. Yeah. That, that is a lesson in itself, by the way. Mm. Like even when you don't feel like showing up because you feel you got no chance, yeah. you show you up. You do it again. You because at anyway. some point, opportunities are going to present Always. themselves. And you got to be ready to capture them. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so we're going to change the subject now. Kay. We're going to talk about something that it's um, the passion that, the biggest passion that you have, mm -hmm. which is um, your humanitarian efforts mm -hmm. to handle human trafficking. Yes. I'll tell you a quick little story about how I found out about uh, what you were doing to begin with. Okay. It was 2017 okay. and I was at an event mm -hmm. in uh, ClickFunnels. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that company, ClickFunnels? I've heard of it. Okay, they, the founder, is uh, his name is uh, Russell Brunson. Yeah. And he got really close with Tim Ballard. Oh, okay. Very close. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this, this was a big event. Yes, yes, uh, yes. So they had somewhere around, so I was there with uh, one of my partners, mm -hmm. and, uh, or I was learning marketing and business and everything, and it was about 2,000 people. Mm. And um, and this is the whole thing that they were behind. Mm. So I don't know exactly, I know Tim, Tim Ballard, which we're going to talk about Tim uh, shortly, but 
Tim is like next level ninja. Like this <laughs> this dude is like something yeah. else, right? I would love to meet him one day. Mm -hmm. Very, very special guy. Um, so he was looking for funds, obviously, to mm -hmm. help him because he got away from the government so mm -hmm. he can actually go and get these things done effectively. Yeah. So um, I know he did this event in, with ClickFunnels mm -hmm. and Russell Brunson had a whole story mm. uh, and he put a video and it was an emotional thing and that building was falling apart, right? Like it was yeah. like so full of emotion and he raised a lot of funds in that building because mm -hmm. a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners that are successful, yeah. that they don't really know what to do with their money. Right. They don't know how to help people. Right. They, they wanna help people, yeah. but nobody presents to them a solution mm -hmm. for, hey, this is how you impact the world. Yes. So uh, they did this event uh, and uh, in between all the education and all the content that they did, uh, Russell did a whole like thing to promote um, OUR. Mm -hmm. Underground uh, operation, underground railroad. Right. I said that correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they did a whole video, and imagine when at the end of that video, like it really gave us goosebumps. Like mm -hmm. it, it was like something else. Like I understand. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. um, he ends a story with, uh, "I ended up adopting these two kids." Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And he brought them home, and yeah. then he shows how the two kids. Mm -hmm got to Tim's house mm -hmm. and they connected with his family and they were just, they were, they were made part of that family. Yeah. So that's how I got introduced to it. And I donated okay. to the campaign and I got super into it. And I oh. saw you in the, on that video, they talked about you also, cause you've been involved in it for. I mean, I met Tim right after he left the government. So, so that was 2000 and what? 2013. Wow, so so you were already in this video. So okay. you were showing yeah, yeah. up in I've this video. I've been going undercover with him for a little Correct. while. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Um, but that's how I was introduced to it. Okay. And I became a big fan of it. Mm. And um, I always had the goal, like, I want to meet Marisol because what she's doing is incredible. Thank and you. it takes courage mm. and it takes a lot of like passion, right? Mm. So to put yourself in that position. So why don't you tell the audience, like, what is the current situation with this? Sure. Because here's the thing people don't really understand because we live in this freaking bubble. Yeah. And especially people that are watching this show we have the ability to help and create an impact. We really mm -hmm. do, right? So yeah. how do we get these people to get more involved with what you're doing, mm -hmm. what you're up to? Because Thank I you. know that this is more important to you than your acting career, yeah, right? Yeah, completely. Up, it makes sense, yeah. right? So why don't you tell them a little bit about this yourself? Sure, so, okay, so when I first started this and started hearing about it back in 2012, 2013, I think the numbers of people caught up in human trafficking in the world was about 20 million, right? Now, it's 45 million. So it's which just tells you exponentially how growing. It's exponentially growing. Now, the thing about trafficking is that it operates in the shadows. So no one, it's not like, you know, people are taking surveys, right? And when people think of human trafficking, they think of a particularly sex trafficking, which was one part of human trafficking, which is sort of the part that I concentrate the most on, child sex trafficking. Um, they think, they go, oh, those poor girls, you know, in Poland, or unfortunately Mexico, or Cambodia, or the Philippines, and they have no idea that it's in their own state, it's in their own country, and it's in their own backyard. It's in every single state in America. Every single state. Every wow. single state, every single major city. Period. Every, every single small city. Well, isn't it U.S. the number one consumer of, of child pornography oh, even in yes. the world? Right? So the U.S. is the number one producer, distributor, and consumer of pornography in the world. And child pornography. Period. And then the industry itself, human trafficking, which I heard it was 150 billion. Is that right? Billion dollar industry. Billion dollar industry, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So 150 billion dollar industry, yes. right? So that industry is also a big part of that is happening here in this own oh, yeah. country that we 100%. live in. Right? I mean, you, the United States is now a destination country, which means um, there's few destination countries, which means people will travel from abroad to go to a destination country to have sex with kids. And the U.S. is a top destination country. Crazy. Which when people hear about it, they're like, wait, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Because the social veneer that's out there, you don't know. So you have no idea. Most, most good people don't know about this. And that's the problem. Because all the bad guys know all about it. You know, uh, one of the first ops I did, we put an ad in Craigslist. I've talked about this before. Um, in other and on my own podcast I and with Tim, I saw the I saw what you guys were talking about. Exactly. So we, we got sixty applications in fifteen minutes. In fifteen minutes, something like before Craigslist took it down. In a small friggin' town, very small town in California. Because Craigslist uh, flags Craigslist it and has, we'll take it down. Yeah. So Craigslist had filters at right. least. Um, some of these other sites do not have filters, but Craigslist had filters. So we had to put this ad out 
um, coated. But how crazy that in 15 minutes. Yeah, in 15 minutes. 60 pedophiles or 60 100%. perverts. 100%. Just, hey, I want this. Absolutely. You got a nine year old? 100%. Where do I go? Nine year old and 12 year old. In a hundred, like, like that. And that was back in 2014, 2015. So now, with all the numbers that have doubled and tripled since then, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So how and do we, it's, how do, go ahead. Well, the other thing I want to say is the top, the profile for men that travel abroad to have sex with kids, whether it's Thailand, or the Dominican Republic, or Haiti, or any, any of the destination countries, including the United States, but the profile for men that travel abroad is white, middle-aged American men. Wow. Period. Wow. That's the customers. So whenever I travel to these countries and you get on the plane, you look around, you see a bunch of single men, single white men in the plane. I'm like, oh, really? What are you doing? <laughs> You, quite, you, you oh, doubt every single one of these people, right? Like, I don't doubt. I know exactly what they're doing because <laughs> they ain't there on business. Mm -mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy to think about. It's crazy it's, to it's think all about. It's so unreal. It's so unreal, right? Like, so yeah. you, you got to really have a confront of evil. You got to be it, able to. It's the most evil thing in the planet when you think of, of any, whether it's a, a, a anyone being held against their will, being forced into slavery, um, and especially being forced to have strangers use their body in whatever way that they want over and over and over again all day long. So so how does that how does that journey start for these kids? Because is it is it coming from an orphanage? Is it because It depends where. Or is so it a parent is like, "Hey, I don't want you." Here it, you go. It's all of the above. So, um it just depends. If it's in a foreign country and it's a kid, sometimes it's uh parents that are selling their kids under the guise of, "Oh, I'm giving my kid a better life." Trafficker comes, "Oh, we have a school that we want to send your kid to i mean there was it's like they have a recruitment office a hundred percent and these guys are smart so once they get the kid it's gone then the kid's gone and that's it that's, I would imagine that's their life parents are like drug addicts and they're looking for like a or way just out. poor or just poverty period this is or all, they think unreal. they're giving their kid another life i mean you're a mom a better of, life of a beautiful girl you have rain i got four kids it's so unreal i would die for my kids of course right so it's of course to think about a parent just being willing to like commit their kid even if they well feel again better some of these some of these parents don't know what they're doing some of these parents think they're sending their kid off to a school or off to a better life and they've been fooled by the traffickers and they're low income they haven't gone to school themselves so they can't really see the out points and that this may not be legitimate and these kids are right? young enough that they don't really have access to their phones and they don't really have they no, don't, these are kids they don't know their phone numbers or their parents so it's like basically once they take him off it's over. They're gone. They're gone. Right? So that's that scenario. Then in other scenarios, any kind of disaster like the war in Ukraine, the earthquake that just happened, um, the earthquake that happened in Haiti, any of these places, it's a field day for these traffickers. Recruitment center. Let's exactly. go. Exactly. So they show up and they show up to these disaster areas and they go and no one knows what to do because these kids have all just been orphaned because most of the parents are dead or whatever, or they can't find their parents. And so they put up a sign and they go, okay, well, give us the kids. We're an orphanage. And they go, oh, good. Someone's helping. So very well-meaning people, well, they'll bring the kid over to the quote unquote orphanage and turn them over to traffickers and not even know. Wow. Not even know what they're doing. Wow. And then in America, what does it look like? Well, in America, it's foster care children. It's foster care children and runaways. And the I, I hate to say it, but the term that has been used over the last 15 years, they're called throwaway kids. Wow. Because no one's looking for them. There's no parents out there looking for them. And it's just, and it's, it's horrific. But, you know, when people think of trafficking in America, they think of other kids being brought here. They think of, oh, you know, girls are being brought from Poland or the Ukraine. It's like, no, 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 no. Or South America. Or no, it's supply and demand. We've got the supply right here in America, and we've got the demand right here in America. There's truly no need to bring girls from another country over here because we have more than enough here. It does happen, but it's not common because it's all right here. Lot, plenty of right. times we'll take girls from here and export them to other countries. That happens. But in America, it's, it's all here. Right. It's right here under our noses. Wow, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's expanded so exponentially from 20 to 45 million, mm -hmm. right? These are actual individual humans being trafficked. That's mm -hmm. the number that is estimated. Mm -hmm. Like these numbers are, are, are actually- They're unthinkable. They're unthinkable. Um, is there an agency, like a government agency that is responsible for these numbers and like- Yeah, so there's two, di there's several different organizations. There's, um, you know, the nonprofit, center sector there's a walk free foundation they're called and they're the ones that that the united nations and other government entities use as sort of the the standard 
right? Because they've been doing this for, geez, over a decade now. And they have the best statistics that there are. And they, you can search on the Walk Free Foundation by country, right? So let's say you punch in a country, I don't know, let's say Zimbabwe or something in Africa, and you can find out how many people are enslaved in Zimbabwe and what kind. Is it labor trafficking? Is it debt bondage? Is it this? Is it that? Including the United States. So the Walk Free Foundation is what everyone sort of uses as the template, and the United Nations uses it as well as our government and other governments around the world. Right, mm -hmm. right. For those numbers. Okay, but anyways, we cannot really depend on, on these organizations to actually really do the job because they have limitations and jurisdiction and all these other things, right? Like You mean to go out and rescue? Yeah, like the That's government story. organizations, they, they're not really going to get the job done, right? Well, look, I'm not going to, I mean... I'm not going to put down the government because they're doing their, like United States, we're, we're really passing laws and passing legislation and doing everything that we can as well as other countries to sort of catch up to the problem, right? But in the United States or in any other country, you have to have jurisdiction. So let's say it's the CIA and they have their own, you know, um, sex trafficking units and they, they go just like Homeland Security and just like Tim used to work. You have to have jurisdiction to go into another country and go in and rescue kids. Otherwise, why isn't that country doing it? Right? And there's no resources. So unless there's an American citizen being held captive in, let's say, um, Ecuador or even Canada or anything like that, why would the United States go? They have no jurisdiction. Or the American citizen being the perpetrator. Exactly. One or the other. Exactly. So there has to, have, there has to be cause for our government to do that. And we're one of the best governments that there are doing this. So then you go to like a place like Dominican Republic or Haiti or another third world country, Venezuela or whatever. They don't have the infrastructure they don't have the money, they don't have the education um, on trafficking like the United States does. So they don't, they don't have the resources to go in and start doing undercover stings and all of that stuff. So that's where sort of, you know, somebody like Tim or I will come in because when I'll go into these countries, we sort of also educate the law enforcement there on how to do these things. Right, mm -hmm. right, okay, it makes sense. Yeah. So how do we, how do we, start bringing these numbers down. So what is the So the, the first and foremost, unfortunately, it's always going to be awareness because of good, like I've said this a thousand times, but if, if good people don't know about this, it's never going to change. It's never going to change, period. You have to have enough of an uproar. And the only people that are going to give an uproar about kids being trafficked for sex are good people, our parents, our teachers, our, you know, well-meaning, sane adults because all the bad guys know about it. So it starts with awareness, because look, I can, <clears throat> I can rescue all that I want, but it's whack-a-mole. We can take down a trafficking ring, we can take down a pedophile, we can throw them in jail, we can get the kids out. And to that kid, you've saved their life, or that person that you've just liberated. But there's another one that's gonna pop up, doesn't matter. We can't, we can't, we can't legislate our way out of this, and we can't rescue our way out of it. It has to be a movement. It has to be demand. Just like there was a whole Black Lives Matter movement, just like there was an entire Me Too movement, and those demands changed things, Indeed. it has to be the exact same thing with trafficking. We have to make enough good people aware so that they demand it changes. We do need laws that are more um, punishable, where the crime is way more, because believe it or not, it's not life in prison automatically if right. you have sex with, ch with a child. It can be five years, whatever. You got three time offenders, you know, we'll arrest guys and they've been arrested three fucking times and gone into That's weird. prison three times and they've been let out and blah, 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 blah. The laws need to be stricter. The punishment needs to be right. higher for these crimes. So there are things being put in place, but at the end of the day, we need enough people aware of this so that demand for this changes and that's it. And so that human trafficking becomes a thing that you read about in the history books rather than something that we're trying to combat now. So it's a combination of creating the awareness for the good people. Mm -hmm while at the same time creating a concern and a fear on the bad ones. Yes, and we need money and we need res resources for that. Right. Period. We just do. We need law enforcement. You know that there's, everyone's like, why are the cops doing anything? Well, great, but you know that there's no, there's no just human trafficking policemen. They're the same guys that have to handle robbery and burglary and drugs and everything else. The, the same, like, 40 guys or same 20 guys. Right. We need way more. We need more resources so that it becomes more dangerous for someone to buy a kid for sex. Right. It's not dangerous. So enough. that's where uh, the hashtag join the fight comes in. Exactly. Right? Exactly. We just got to 
increase our, our workforce, our team, people that are pushing on the same cause. Exactly. So and um, all, yeah. somebody that you know, which is Nancy Cartwright, yeah, yeah. Um, we have been running her campaign uh, yeah. for five years. Oh, uh, that's which great. Which is the No More About Drugs campaign, yeah, yeah. which is also a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. And we've reached millions of people and mm. we've created an impact, right? right? So, and I understand that it's, at the end of the day, there are opportunities in this world that we didn't have before. Right. Like, in, this is 2023 right now, and we have this thing called social media, mm -hmm. in which we can press buttons and get awareness. Exactly. And that's something that when you did your um, your film, 1995, uh, Las Vegas Vacation, didn't exist. We didn't have the, uh, the, the ability to press buttons and reach the world like yeah, we have no. right now. Mm -hmm. the, you know, if, if you go back in 1995 or 1999. Well, even 24, 2004. Right. Right, 2004. There was no social media. There was no social media. Exactly. Uh, we we couldn't really fight mm -hmm. back right. or join the cause, mm -hmm. the fight at the level that we can right now. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is just about that. If we get enough people, like I mentioned to you how there's a lot of successful business people, entrepreneurs that make a lot of money mm -hmm. and they are good people mm -hmm. because most of us are good people. We want to do something with that money yes. for good. Yes. All we got to do is introduce this major cause. Mm -hmm. I mean, what Marisol does is ridiculous mm. she'll she'll go undercover she'll create a voice of a 10 year old girl she'll get all dressed up and make the, a lot of makeup that you wouldn't even notice that it's marisol nichols right. crazy crazy stuff so when when somebody invests on on your nonprofit organizations yes or or tim ballard's nonprofit organizations then it's basically creating this movement that you guys can keep on creating a hundred percent i mean not only does it does any money that people donate to slavery free world go towards helping us go undercover and doing the things that we do but we're also building technology because as you mentioned social media and technology these days it's a different it's a different world than what it was right so a lot of trafficking actually happens online and a lot of child predators are, are out there you hear about it all the time so one of the things that we're building is there's a software that exists right now right, that is, that is existing on the dark web right now, that all pedophiles are using. And they're going out there and they're searching and scouring the internet, whether it's, whether it's a Minecraft game or Roblox or just the regular internet or social media or Facebook, and the algorithm goes out there and it finds little kids that are online alone, right? So that the pedophiles can then go and, tra and target them. So we're, bit, we're building, because there's, there's certain profiles that pedophiles use to find these kids that are vulnerable so that they can be exploited. So we're building the opposite technology. And so we're building technology along with the LAPD um, that's gonna license it from Slavery Free World that um, basically is the kid. So that when the pedophiles come, we get all the information, we get everything, and then we can turn it over to law enforcement so that they can use it and then go after those guys and take them down. Again, it's, it's, it's still whack-a-mole, but it becomes more dangerous for these pedophiles to approach a kid online when we can arrest them, we can show that we're arresting them, we can export that technology to all different law enforcement and really make a dent in this. So there's, there's other things that we're doing and we're building. In addition to that, there's no national trafficking database in the United States. Wow. So there's, since you work with um, Nancy on Say No to Drugs, right? There's a drug trafficking database, there's a gang database. So if any law enforcement agency around the United States can plug into it and go, oh, okay, so this gang member is a part of the Crips or the Bloods and he goes to here and his, here's his lieutenants and here's everything and it can be passed on to all law enforcement, there's nothing like that for trafficking. So we're building that as well. Wow. We're building that as well. And, and we're coming up with these things by working with our, our partners in law enforcement or within the government to go, what is needed? What's missing? What tools can we give you that can help within this fight? And that needs a lot of funds. It, it needs, needs a lot, lot of energy. Of funds. Exactly. And so that's just the way it is. Like, exactly. It doesn't matter how successful one individual is, like you're successful in your own career, mm -hmm. you can't really sponsor the entire thing. No. You can't. It just needs a lot more. A lot. That's just the way it is. Exactly. So it's a lot of power that's needed. Uh, the other thing that I, 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 I would love to figure out how to help you with this, mm. your content, for example, on the podcast Hollywood Vigilante. Yeah. How many episodes do you have already? We've done 13 for the first 13. season. We need to make these go viral. Mm -hmm. and, and there's an opportunity for that. We need, and that, that's a path for getting awareness at scale. 100%. On these platforms. Yeah. Because we, we were actually voted the top 100 crime podcast on Spotify, which was fantastic. So it's amazing. Yeah, out so, of 4.4 million. Yeah, so you're yeah. bringing in all these great guests, mm -hmm. and the sheriff and Tim and all these guys that mm -hmm. have these incredible stories, which are like 
it's it's unreal and yeah. and people just have to confront the reality of it because yeah. it's it's true story but more importantly what we're also trying to have on the podcast are experts which we have on there that can help parents and help teenagers who are listening how to keep themselves safe and keep their loved ones safe online because it's a it's a it's a breeding ground right now for predators targeting this and targeting that and they can be anyone because it's anonymous right. so we give parents and we give kids you know, tricks and tools and everything that they can use to not only protect themselves, but protect their friends and family. My daughter, my own daughter, who's 14 years old, helped her friend who was being targeted by a whole couple that was targeting other kids for a year and helped her get off of them and, and block them and tell the other ones around that these, this, two, this couple was targeting them. It was horrific. And it happens constantly. And unless you know what to look for, how do you know what's real and what's not real? How do you know that the person you're talking to is not a 12-year-old little boy, but it's actually a 45-year-old man just waiting for the opportunity to get you? Right. It's a whole different world. So we also show that sort of things and give people practical practical tics, uh, trips, trips, practical, practical tricks, too much coffee. Practical tips. And tips that they can use. Mm -hmm. And we're actually having Meta on um, in about two weeks from Facebook and Instagram to share everything that they're doing to keep kids safe online. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So on the, um, historically, when it comes to pedophiles, mm -hmm. uh, I have heard that a lot of it is really happening up close within the families. Is that accurate? Because, uh, you know, so, so we have, the internet world has given us the, the dark side and the bright side. Right? Yes. The dark side in reality is that it makes it has made these people able to reach mm -hmm. all these kids that yep. are vulnerable. That's the reality, right? Yes. And at the same time, it's given us the opportunity for us to spread a message about this and get awareness. Exactly. So it's responsible for both things. Yes. The reality. Exactly. I, I would imagine that we wouldn't have the explosion of like this particular disgusting area mm -hmm. if it wasn't because of the internet. Exactly. Right? It's just, 100%. It has facilitated it. I mean, if you think about it, back in the day, um, if you wanted to watch pornography or some sort of degraded sex thing, you had to get out of your house, you had to go down the street, you had to find a theater that was showing it. There was a bit of a hidden quality to it. You'd probably hide your identity a little bit to go in there and do whatever you were gonna do and watch it. Nowadays, anybody has access not only to to regular porn but also degraded porn and they can do it at the click of a mouse right and sit in their basement or in their room and close the door and watch whatever and you know one of the organizations that i work with a lot is called fight the new drug and they talk about how the link between pornography and sex trafficking it's not it's a different thing nowadays it's not anybody has access to any of this sort of degradation and sexual degradation including kids wow Including kids. I, I hadn't thought about that. So yeah. the pornography is almost like the gateway drug. But right? Oh, yeah. That takes a person towards a level yeah, of because trafficking. Unfortunately, it sort of acts like a drug on the brain. And it after you've watched like any other drug, um, you need harder and harder and harder to get the same effect. Right. And if you go on to, which I don't, but on Pornhub, you know, the number one search, the number one searched keywords on Pornhub are rape. Teenage. That's what they want. Kid. Ugh. That's what's being searched for. Wow. And wow. any like any business, and you're it's supply and demand. Wow. So if you're showing a demand for all these things, guess what? You're increasing the supply, and that and hence we have a supply of 4.4 million children caught up in sex trafficking in the in the world. I wish I wish the government. I wish the government. I mean, uh, Don, uh, Donald Trump a couple of years threatened with banning TikTok permanently and getting them out because of the threats that it was. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why the government cannot say, just listen, anything on the internet that is pornography, it's gonna disappear, it's gonna get blocked. So I would imagine that there's ways around that for because we wanna stop that gateway drug. Of course. I'm sure that that's gonna have a huge impact if we actually did something like that, hopefully. I mean, yes, it'll never happen, but yes. It will never happen, <laughs> it'll right? It'll never happen. Pornography is a humongous, humongous, like, multi, multi, multi-million dollar business, and they have people that lobby for them. Now, but the good things that have happened, so there's a guest that we had on, Layla Micklewaite, who um, has an organization that does nothing but fight Pornhub and expose what they're doing, because a place like Pornhub is a user-generated experience. So for those people that aren't savvy with that, what that means is you have a pedophile, kidnaps a kid, rapes her, puts it on, videos it, and then uploads that video to Pornhub. 
And Pornhub goes, great, thank you very much. And then they make money off of how many people download that video and it goes like that That's all awesome. over the world. That's the problem with Pornhub is it's user, gen one of the many problems with Pornhub is it's user generated. So they have actual rape on there. They have molestation. They have what we call now CSAM, which is child sexual abuse material. And people are profiting over it. And everyone's downloading it all over the world. And once anything goes on the internet, it stays forever. So there's all these laws right now that are being implemented to hold Pornhub accountable, Instagram and Facebook, thank you Meta, blocked Pornhub and, and would not allow them to have any kind of social media presence whatsoever. But that just happened like three months ago. Right. Just three months ago. Otherwise they had their own Instagram site, their own Facebook site, their own Meta site. Like it's nothing. They're verified. Are you kidding me? It's crazy. So there are there is legislation going in hardcore against things like this but again it's sort of a race right it, it, we're racing against this we just got to keep pushing we just got to get more people to join the cause that's right we just got to get more people to join the fight and that's push. right that's the way it is exactly so marisol as we're wrapping up because we can yes. talk about this for Thank hours you. and hours and hours yep how can people watching this that are getting inspired by it how so can they join? you know i would ask everyone to please if you can search for the marisol nichols podcast we're on Spotify and Apple and iHeartRadio and everywhere that podcasts are sold. And on YouTube, you can actually watch it. Um, it's visual. And if you can't find it, just go to MarisolNichols.com and there's a link there. And we not only have experts on that share everything, and you, but you also get a behind the scenes look on what this actually looks like. Um, so spreading awareness obviously is key. Please go to ideally my website, slaveryfreeworld.org. Slaveryfreeworld.org. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put this on the links. Yes, also. please. Mm -hmm. and, and any kind of support you can give, even if it's $10 a month, we'll take it. So you can make Does a donation on slaveryfreeworld.org. Yes. Please, yes. And, and that donation, which obviously um, I know how hard work on, on this campaign, yes. gets put to work towards all these everything, projects, it's operations, rescue, everything. Softwares that you guys need to launch, exactly. uh, going after Pornhub and legislations and stuff like that, or whatever that is, exactly. that is on the battle yes, plan please. to help you guys succeed. Exactly, and we're also building a curriculum for schools, and I'm going to personally go um, in two months, go start speaking to schools directly and creating curriculum for teachers so that they can educate their own students on what to look for when their students are online. Wow, this is such a big game. Like, has it become almost difficult for you to continue to be an actress with something of such high profile? Purpose? No, it's been more difficult to go undercover <laughs> because I'm an actress. Because you've gone so the disguises fame. have to be more and more clever for what I do and the accents and everything else, so that I can still go in and infiltrate. But at the same time, because I'm an actress and because I have a built-in audience, which I love, I can utilize that platform that I've been given to make people more aware of this issue and ideally get more people to help and jump on board. That's amazing. Okay, so slaveryfreeworld.org. Mm -hmm. Anybody wants to jump on board and wants Please. to participate. Marisol, Thank when you. can we expect the amazing, real, um, the show of, uh, of, oh, of well, your life? Oh, well, we just actually just uh, changed it from a TV show to a film. It's gonna be a film? So now it's going to be a film, and I'll tell you what, as soon as it's announced, I'll announce it on my social media, and everyone will be um, aware of it. Right now, we're at in the some development. Point. Mm -hmm. At some point in the future. Exactly. Hopefully not too long. We no, can no, see no. That. That's going to help create awareness also. Yeah, I'm really excited That would excited be amazing. I'm truly excited. Amazing. Marisol, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. We're going to help spread the word like crazy. Thank I'm you. sure that um, our audience is going to want to participate and be a part of this. Hashtag join the fight. Yes, please. Let's keep on fighting. Let's keep on making a change because here's the thing. We don't realize it, but we can really make a difference if we act. Yeah. It's, it's, we, we take for granted what we could do, what we, if we participate. Absolutely. But we can definitely make a change if we work together on this. Please. It needs, we need an army. We need an army. We need an army. Thank you for watching. Thank I will you. see you guys in the next episode. Thank you, Marisol. Thank you.